Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz, Tribeca Trade Group. And today is Friday, December 16th. So uh, wrapping up the end of a big week uh, in terms of events. Um, today was quadruple witching, um, which um, you know had a lot of volume. Uh, didn't seem like there was a ton of volatility uh, for today. But you know, if you go through and if you look at names and and how much they traded, there was a lot of volume today. Um, but it looks like you know the market makers and so forth did a decent job with um, with putting down some pretty big orders for uh, for size. Because I think today, if you go through individual names, you're going to see all types of volume, uh, just about on on every single stock name, um, at least that I see. That's that's very uh, you know, very high volume. So. Um, risk disclaimer, I don't have it uh, actually in front of you, but everything that we're going through is for information purposes only in this video, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Uh, let's talk about the week's performance, and then I'll keep this video pretty brief. We're, we'll, I'll just go over the indices. I'm not really going to go over any, any individual stocks. I'll go over a couple sectors and some levels to watch and just uh, from uh, some uh, takeaways for the week. So um, S&P finished down 25 percent for the week. Um, Q's finished down a little bit more than that. And um, an IWM kind of in line with those two, down about 2.4%. International areas were also down uh, pretty decently, both emerging markets and international developed were down. Uh, one was down 3%. The other one was down 22 which is international developed. Bonds were the only, th only thing green here, um, but they weren't even up that much. They were up uh, about seven tenths of a, yeah, seven tenths of a percent. Um, the dollar was essentially flat for the week, and uh, and growth underperformed value, but they were both down for the week. Uh, sectors, um, which we'll get into in just a second. As I mentioned, I would talk about a couple of these things. First, let's talk about the S&P chart and a couple takeaways, I would say, for the week. So um, just to kind of summarize what we saw this week, I mean, that's as, you know, ugly as a rejection as you probably want to see um, right there at the top of value for the month of December, as well as the 200 day moving average. Uh, remember when we saw this the first time around, um, my thought was, let's see if it's, if it can kind of hang around here and build back up. Um, so I was right with that, with that assumption. Um, but I did not, I definitely did not say that we were going to get rejected like that the second time around and, um, and reverse back. So um, it's pretty darn ugly. And when you take out this, the, the wick on this, um, on this candle, you know, one of the things that you may also kind of see here is a left shoulder, a head and a right shoulder. Um, and then the break of like, you know, a, a, um, a neckline that you could draw there for, for a, um, short-term head and shoulders type pattern. Um, that's what I see. That's what stands out to me. So where are we? So of course the upside did get rejected. That's 4082 was the top of value. Again, um, I always view uh, when the value areas line up with a major moving average, it becomes a bit more significant to me. Um, and interesting that that's exactly what happened here is uh, you know a firm reje rejection there. So where does that leave us? Um, well, not in a not in a area of strength. Um, you know, I also have the moving. Of course, I just mentioned the two hundred day moving average, but I also have the short term moving averages on my chart. If you're a member of Tribeca Trade Group, you know that I I talk a lot about some of the short term moving averages because it really kind of gives you a sense of what the short term trend is. And if you're trading on that time frame, then um, you, you know, then then you then you've heard me say how important um, it is because again, it gives you a sense of what the short term trend is. So um, we're basically below all of these. Um, we're not holding on to anything. So here's the 200. Here is the 20. Here's the five, and down here is the 50. So price is below all of these. Again, that is a position of weakness, not strength. What does it look like in terms of the valuers? Well, we did hold the bottom of value, um, you know, by a thread. That's thirty eight fifty seven, um, and it really, you know, I got a question on Twitter, and and I appreciate questions like like this. They said, well, well, what does that mean? You know, if um, you know, what what do I expect? Because by the way, the eighty percent rule is now complete. Um, so 80% rule complete. Um, and if you're not familiar with that is, <laughs> it's funny because I get this question all the time. First of all, you could just Google 80% um, rule for valuers and you'll get a definition. But it means that once you establish, once you start a period below, uh, sorry, <laughs> below, 
or above value and you break inside the value area, there's an 80% chance that you go all the way through it, right? So if you were playing that trade, you got it. Um, that was complete. And um, that's where we finished for the day. So now what? Does it mean that we bounce on the bottom of value? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Um, it means that you have a support level to trade against with anything. It doesn't matter if it's a value area or any other support resistance level, right? You want to be watching closely to see if that support, you know, just like here, right? That was significant. We could not get through it, right? Now, if, if we were able to get through it, then I would have said, hey, your next area that you could take profits, which we got pretty close to, is this 4206. So same thing to the downside. If this 38.57 and a half breaks, then you could look to target 37, you know, 37.52 down there. Okay. And that would be a trade idea, um, you know, a short trade idea to be targeting this, uh, this point of control. Again, price did not, um, there's no overlap of the value areas. So this, this point of control becomes a virgin point of control. And, um, and that would be to the downside. Now, there's one other level to watch here on the one hour chart. Um, this would have been nice, nice and clean and tidy. Um, if we did take out 38, uh, 38.52, we got very close to it. <laughs> I mean, really close to it. And um, it does not look like that was taken out. So I don't know, we might be leaving that for the beginning of next week. Um, it doesn't have to be taken out. Um, that's the whole thing, right? So um, it's not mandatory that that gets taken out, but I kind of think we might need to see that before we get some type of a, a, you know, a bounce. If the market does want to bounce, that would be a good place for it to do so uh, on a 38.51. Now, um, you know, to kind of map this out a little bit, what could happen, right? So if you're kind of, you know, if you're a person who likes to short, you know, let's say that there that this, um, you know, I, I hate to keep using this because it's it is over overused. Um, but let's say that there is a Santa Claus rally, and it, that could just be a day or two. So if the bottom of value is going to be for next week, right around thirty nine forty six, right, and if we do bounce, that might be a level that you want to short into, right. And if we don't take this out, like on Monday, right, if we do bounce up to here. Then you can then then you can establish a short and look for a move down here. All right. Notice I'm talking a little bit more about shorting here because we did lose all those moving averages and the short term trend is down at this point. All right. So that's what the S and P looks like. Let's just go through some of the other indices. I'll do this at a little bit faster pace here as we go through Nasdaq. All right. Same thing here. Rejected at the top of value. The two the. Price was weaker and never made it up to the 200-day moving average, but you could see the valuers did a great job at telling you where there was resistance. Support is going to be 11,235. 11, um, some people don't look at NASDAQ futures, and I, I understand. Um, you know, so two, this is a way for thinker swim to adjust, but um, 27363 is your support there. Similar to SP, the price action is below all the moving averages. So it is in a position of weakness and uh, we'll get weaker if we break through the December value area. Um, IWM, which is the weakest of the three, um, interesting that that did get below value and it did take out that VPOC down there. So possible place for a bounce. Now, again, notice I'm saying bounce. I'm not saying trend reversal or anything like that. I'm just saying a bounce. And I think that term is going to be important. And I'll get back to that in just a second. Um, the diamonds, right? Remember, just not too long ago, we heard, you know, I spent a lot of time talking about how strong the the um, the diamonds have been, um, but they succumbed as well to the pressure. Now, they also closed inside the valuary for the month of December. The levels, the support level to watch is 328.30. Now, notice how different the picture is here. Let's go. Let's go back for a second. S&P, 200-day moving average here, diamonds, 200-day moving average down here. So price is still above here for the Dow, um, you know, and price is below the 5 and the 20, um, but is still above the 50 and the 200-day moving average. So, and it's also clinging onto the bottom of value. So again, this would be a, you know, a, again, a possible bounce spot. Um, I don't know if the trend gets better. Um, I would need to see a little bit even more, you know, even if this we did bounce at the beginning of the week, 
you know, if you're looking at the trend to resume, you would probably want to see the price to get back above also the short term moving averages as well for confirmation. All right. So it's kind of interesting, right? That's something I think to watch for that's, you know, I would say one of the takeaways from this video is to watch to see if um, that holds for next week. Also, you could see that the um, that it was rejected again at the bottom of value, right? The price was higher in the beginning of the week. And we're now back below. Keep in mind, we only have a couple more weeks of December. Also, I'll just give you the view of what the S&P looks like on the weekly chart as well, because the week is now complete and we are back below um, the value area. Right, another rejection. That's the third rejection in a row. Here's one, here's the second last week and this week as well. So again, multiple time frame analysis. That's what we that's what we do. And um and because we do find different, you know, important levels on each time frame. All right. I I mentioned that that I would talk about the um a couple other sectors. This was my one sector that I thought was must watch for the week or or one of the must watch areas were the semiconductors. Again, very tricky this week. Right. All this consolidation right? You did get the move higher and then reject it. Well, you know, this is kind of all over the place when you start to look at individual names that look like they wanted to go higher and kind of failed a bit. Um, that's what you get in bear markets. You get a lot of failures like that, right? Very difficult, right, to um, to have breakouts when you're in a bear market, which is what we're currently in, right? We got close to possibly, take, you know, turning the corner, but you, I think, you know, at this point, you can conclude that we are back inside. You know, we're we are back. We're definitely more than we were the last couple of weeks. Um, you can conclude that this is the bear market continues. All right. One other one or two other sectors that um, it was on my was on my radar this week. Um, XLV, the healthcare ETF. Right. I tend to like XLV when when, when the market is more in a situation that we're in right now in a bear market, more of a defensive um, place I tend to look more at the healthcare stocks than the biotech stocks, but um, same thing. Like this is a check back to the top of value. One thirty five fifty two would be a level to um, to to watch for next week to see if this holds right. Because again, you might see some areas, some you know, after we saw a little bit of a correction in the defensive areas, the the um, areas that were that are more value versus growth, um, you might see some of these these types of areas begin to outperform again, right? Something that we'll be watching for next week. All right, um, let's see, Was there was one other point. Oh, I was gonna come back to the term bounce versus um, trend. You know, I think really that's kind of the way that um, this this market to think about this market, right? And to go back, you know, sh you know making your duration of your trades um, a little bit shorter, right? Meaning more day trading, um, and more, you know, very quick, quicker trading. Even if it's a if it's a swing trade, it's probably going to be a shorter term swing trade for me. I'm not saying that's you know I'm not again I'm not giving out any advice or recommendations. But when we're in a position of weakness, right, you can still trade, and you could of course trade both sides of the market. Um, but I think the duration kind of um, collapses in terms of not looking for long term swings. Uh, because there's just too much weakness in the overall market. Let me bring up the last thing, which is the performance. Um, interesting that the, the energy names, which I, I'm again, it's been a long week, but I'm surprised uh, to see these on top of the leaderboard. Um, I don't think that they're they're in a great position at this point. You know, this is something that we've talked about um, for weeks that I just didn't think that the energy area was looking constructive. And um, I do think it needs, you know, I, I looked at energy a couple times this week. I never pulled the trigger on taking any trades because I, I just think that they, they need more time. Um, and in fact, when you look at oil, um, <clears throat> you know, I think it needs to do something else here than making lower highs. Right. Again, that's also a position of weakness. All right. If you look at all these these peaks, um, basically the the, la the first lower high was made. Um, you know, maybe here. And then in September, we also have another lower high in uh, October. You have another lower high again in November, lower high in the beginning of the month. And then you also have another lower high here. So that's uh, also note prices way below the 200 day moving average. And I don't think that this is a great place 
to be in now until the technical picture changes in the commodity, um, as well as uh, you know what's going on in the stocks as well. All right, guys, that is it uh, for today's video. Again, um, you know, quick video for the uh, for the end of the week. Um, you can see the rest of the performers right there. Um, members, you will get more of a more detailed video from me over the weekend, as well as um, you know a small watch list. And we also tone down the watch list too when we're seeing more weakness on the tape. Um, one th one final thing is I did put on a trade for next week an SPX call spread. I actually took a target in that already. Um, right before the close, because I did put that on around um, 2.30 today. So I was able to take a target in that. I'm targeting um, just a bounce trade. That's it. And, um, you know, my exposure is uh, in my trading account has gone back to um, almost 100% cash. All right, guys, have a great weekend. And uh, traders, you hold for me on Sunday.